The movie starts with a young boy named Ji Yom. He's in a court trial because his mom was killed. The person who did it is a man named Song Su. Now Song Su is in trouble with the law. But Song Su already said sorry and admitted he had some mental problems. So, the judge decides to send Song Su to prison for three and a half years. Ji Yong feels really sad when he hears this. He thinks it's not fair that Song Su only gets a short prison time, even though he did something really bad to Ji Yong's mom. When Song Su is taken away to prison, he smirks at Ji Yong for a moment. Fast forward 12 years, Song Su is out of prison, and he does something terrible by attacking a bus driver over a small issue. After hurting the bus driver, Song Su notices a strange guy staring at him from far away. He gets really annoyed when this guy follows him into a narrow alley. The mysterious man introduces himself as Ji Yong, the son of the lady Song Su murdered a long time ago. Without wasting any time, Ji Yong seeks revenge on Song Su and ends up killing him. Soon after, Ji Yong goes back home and looks at an old photo of him and his mom when he was a kid. We also learn that Ji Yong often takes the law into his own hands, especially when criminals avoid punishment or get light sentences. A little while later, there's this experienced police officer called Jun Yap, and he's teaching at the police academy. What's surprising is that Ji Yong is now a student there too. Ji Yong has a question for Jun Yap about why some serious criminals seem to get away with light punishments from the police. Jun Yap says it might be because of a lack of evidence, or even because some cops can be influenced. After their classes, Ji Yong hits the police gym to train in judo. Jun Yap notices Ji Yong's skills, and thinks he's ready to solve real cases out there. Also, every weekend, the police academy students get to go back home. Ji Yong gets ready to head home and meets up with his friends, So Noog and Huang Jun. The three of them are very close because they share a room in the police dormitory and are all going through police training together. When Ji Yong gets back home, he turns out to be a really friendly and helpful guy. He's always there for his neighbors when they need a hand. After lending a hand to one of his neighbors, he goes inside his house and chills while watching the news on TV. In the news, they talk about these two guys who beat up another man so badly that he's now disabled. These two troublemakers are after a house, and they've even gotten away with murder before. Ji Yong hears about this and quickly jumps on his computer to dig into the case and find out the address of the house desired by the two criminals. Later on, those two guys are causing trouble again, this time scaring a woman and her son, trying to force them out of their home. These two bullies had already hurt the woman's husband, as we heard earlier. They were being really nasty to the family, even urinating on their house, when out of nowhere, Ji Yong shows up and takes care of those two troublemakers, and killed both of them. After getting back home, Ji Yong hears about a rich plastic surgeon who did terrible things. This surgeon was involved in lewd activities and repeatedly harmed his patients while secretly recording it. Shockingly, he only got a six-month prison sentence, and they didn't even take away his medical license. When this surgeon was thinking about going back to his wicked ways, Ji Yong suddenly shows up and gives him a beatdown, breaking the surgeon's hand. But Ji Yong doesn't go as far as killing the guy. Instead, he tells the surgeon to quit his practice right away. Ji Yong makes it clear that if the surgeon doesn't stop, he won't hesitate to finish him off. The next day, a journalist with red hair, Choi Miryo, had a meeting with her boss, Chong Yeon. She excitedly told him that she had some amazing news ready for TV. Surprisingly, it was all about the things Ji Yong had been up to. Mai Ryo explained that there was a mysterious guy out there who had been taking the law into his own hands. She said this guy was doing it because he believed the legal system in the country was really weak and favored the rich, so he decided to step in and fill that gap. Mai Ryo wanted to call this mysterious guy Vigilante. But nobody knew who this vigilante really was, not even Mai Ryo herself. When Mai Ryo's news came out, it caused a big stir all over South Korea. Lots of people were on the vigilant side, thinking he was doing the right thing, but the cops didn't like it at all. Ji Yong and his two buddies also heard about it, and even though they were training to be police officers, they supported what the vigilant was doing. The next day, in the journalist's office where Mai Ryo worked, she saw her whole team super excited 
because their company had gotten really high ratings for reporting on the Vigilant. My Rio mentioned that their ratings would keep going up because the Vigilant was likely to do something every weekend. Meanwhile, Ji Yong was on the lookout for cases where the law hadn't done its job. He came across a case involving a guy named Chi Hien, who had killed someone in a hit and run but hadn't been arrested. A little later, there was a woman who was yelling at Chi Hien because his actions had caused her husband to die in that hit and run, but Chi Hien kept saying sorry and promised not to drink and drive again. Surprisingly, Ji Yong was already there, ready to teach Chi Hien a lesson. However, when he heard that Chi Nian was truly sorry and had apologized, Ji Yong decided not to punish him. Meanwhile, Mei Ryo and Chang Yong were scratching their heads because there was no news to report, as the Vigilant or Ji Yong hadn't done anything that weekend. After chatting with Chang Yong, Mei Ryo finally had an idea. They could try to bait the Vigilant by revisiting a case from 2015. Back in 2015, there was a guy who committed a terrible crime, but because the law was weak, he remained a free man until now. Mai Rio believed that if they brought this case back into the spotlight, the Vigilant would likely target the perpetrator next. So, Mai Rio told the TV presenter to bring back the news about the 2015 case, even showing the photo of the perpetrator, Da Gyeong, along with his address. On the other side, Ji Yong was also keeping an eye on the news. The following day, the news that Mai Rio had created spread, and some residents started protesting in front of Da Gyeong's house. They were furious that Da Gyeong hadn't received a fair punishment. On the other hand, Da Gyeong neighbors showed up at the window and shouted at the protesters for disturbing them. Meanwhile, Da Gyeong was munching on food while watching TV. One rainy night, with the quiet atmosphere around him, Dog Young hatched a secret plan to make a getaway using a pickup truck. He made his way to a dock. What he didn't expect was that Mai Rio continued to keep a close eye on him and hastily trailed behind. However, when they arrived at the dock area, Mai Rio lost sight of Dog Young. The problem was there were quite a few pickup trucks there, and it was tricky to spot which one Dog Young had used. The following day, mounting public pressure finally forced the police to pay a visit to Da Gyeong's house, but to their dismay, Da Gyeong wasn't there. Soon enough, some officers received a tip suggesting that Da Gyeong was at a dock, planning his escape. Armed with this information, the police hurried to the dock, assigning two officers to keep watch over the victim's house, the one who had suffered at Da Gyeong's hands. Meanwhile, at the dock, the police scored every ship in the area in search of Dagyon. Mei Rio and Chung Yon were on standby, ready to report the news and ensure their media outlet got the first scoop on Dagyon's capture. But that night, despite their efforts, the police still couldn't locate Dagyon because of the multitude of ships at the dock. Meanwhile, one of the police officers who had been guarding the victim's house was called in to help with the search at the dock leaving the other officer on duty at the victim's place. Before long, Da Gyeong showed up at the victim's house, wearing a helmet and pretending to be a courier. But the sharp-eyed police officer grew suspicious right away, and a confrontation ensued between him and Da Gyeong. Surprisingly, Da Gyeong splashed scalding liquid on the police officer's face, leaving him incapacitated. At the same time, the girl who had been the victim emerged from the scene, and Da Gyeong, quickly dragged her away. As they were going down the stairs, Dog Young was furious with the girl, thinking that she had drawn attention to his case. Just as Dog Young was about to harm the girl, Ji Young arrived just in the nick of time. Without any hesitation, Ji Young took down Dog Young. After severely injuring him, Ji Young instructed Dog Young to write something on the wall before ultimately finishing him off. Shortly after that, the police arrived and Mai Rio entered the scene, pretending to live in the apartment. As she climbed the stairs, Mai Rio couldn't help but smile because Vigilant had taken the bait when she saw the message Da Gyeong had written on the wall using his own blood. The message made it clear that Vigilant would act as the judge for those who were evil and unjust. On the flip side, Ji Yong had changed his attire and was strolling casually through the city. He had made a commitment to continue his role as vigilant because he believed that South Korea's legal system couldn't be trusted completely, and he saw himself as filling the gaps in that system. 
At the same time, the news of Dog Young's demise at the hands of Vigilant once again stirred up a commotion in South Korea. A majority of the public sided with Vigilant because, indirectly, he had aided the powerless who had it received justice through legal means. On the contrary, the police were furious at Vigilant for taking the law into his own hands. In fact, the chief of police in Incheon promptly declared Vigilant as the most wanted fugitive. Some time later, the chief of police in Incheon instructed Jun Yap to join the investigation at the location where Dong Yong was killed. Jun Yap asked Ji Yang and So Nu to lead a discussion with the other students as he had his duties to attend to. When Jun Yap arrived at the scene, he couldn't find any leads and began to think that Vigilant had a deep understanding of police operations. Not long after, a young girl approached them, puzzled by why the police were treating Vigilant as a fugitive when many people actually supported what Vigilant was doing more than they supported the police. Meanwhile, Mi Ryo and Chong Yeon were feeling the heat from law enforcement because their media outlet appeared to be endorsing Vigilant's actions. However, Mei Ryo explained to her team that the most crucial thing was to maintain high ratings for their media company. In fact, she had already set up a situation where a criminal would act as bait to lure Vigilant into continuing his actions. Some time later, Ji Yong, So Nu, and Huang Jun were working out and talking about Vigilant. So Nu mentioned that Vigilant's intelligence and skills were nearly as impressive as Ji Yong's. Ji Yong didn't say anything in response, knowing that he was, in fact, Vigilant himself. Before long, there was breaking news from Mei Rio, which highlighted a man named Du Yap involved in a gruesome crime where he brutally murdered an entire family, including two young children. Sadly, Du Yap had an underage teenager named Song Yul with him during the crime, and he tried to blame it all on the young boy. However, Song Yul received a lenient punishment due to his age. That evening, Ji Yang, who took a keen interest in the case, immediately started investigating Du Yap using the police computer. He also checked out the social media profiles of both Du Yap and Song Yul, who had been released. Ji Yang discovered that the two of them frequently hung out at a nightclub. When the weekend came, Ji Yang, So Nu, and Wang Jun prepared to go out. So Nu and Wang Jun suggested hitting up a nightclub for some fun, as Ji Yong had never been interested in such places before. Surprisingly, Ji Yong agreed to join his friends at the nightclub, but his real motive was to locate Du Yap, who frequented the establishment. It didn't take long for Ji Yong to spot Du Yap relaxing with Song Yul. Out of the blue, a woman found Ji Yong handsome and invited him for a drink. While Ji Yong chatted with the woman, he kept an eye and an ear on Du Yap, who was deep in conversation with Song Yul. Du Yap explained to Song Yul how easily the law in South Korea could be manipulated. He had intentionally dragged Song Yul into a heinous crime, framing him as the main culprit in the brutal murder of a family. This cunning move allowed Du Yap to receive a light sentence while Song Yul, being underage, got away without facing any consequences. Ji Yang, upon hearing this, seethed with anger and decided that Du Yap needed to be dealt with. However, the woman he was with noticed Ji Yong's focus on Du Yap and led him to a quiet spot, thinking that Ji Yong was interested in the drugs Du Yap was involved with. It was there that Ji Yong learned that Du Yap was indeed a drug dealer. The woman seduced Ji Yong, making him feel drowsy and drunk, which prevented him from dealing with Du Yap. Later, when Ji Yong returned to the dormitory after the weekend, he came across photos of two children who had been brutally murdered by Du Yap. This prompted Ji Yong to dig deeper into Du Yap's involvement in drug trafficking. However, Du Yap was always careful and managed to avoid getting caught. In the following weekend, Ji Yong decided to tail Du Yap. He discovered that Du Yap often conducted his shady dealings in a secluded area near the river. Du Yap even stored his drugs in a small house by the river. Meanwhile, Chung Yeon grew anxious because Vigilant hadn't taken any action for three weeks. Mai Ryo reassured Chung Yeon, suggesting that Vigilant E might be laying low, especially after being declared a fugitive. As for Du Yap, after his night at the nightclub, he discovered a note attached to his car. It startled him when he read the message, which told him to surrender by calling a phone number provided on the paper. 
Du Yup asked Song Yul to make the call and find out more. After dialing the number, Song Yul informed Du Yup that it belonged to the National Narcotics Enforcement Agency of South Korea. When Du Yup returned to the nightclub, panic set in as the police suddenly showed up for a search. Luckily, Du Yup managed to escape and headed to a small house near the river where he stored all his drugs. However, when he got there, he realized that Ji Yong had already taken everything. Du Yap tried to attack Ji Yong, but Ji Yong swiftly defeated him and burned all of Du Yap's drugs. Ji Yong urged Du Yap to repent, but Du Yap refused, leading Ji Yong to severely beat him until he was nearly dead. Before ending Du Yap's life, Ji Yong showed him a video of the two children who had been murdered by Du Yap. The next day, Du Yap's lifeless body was discovered, shocking both the police and the public. More and more people began to support Vigilant, which angered the police. The chief of police in Incheon announced that the public should not support Vigilant, calling him a criminal they were pursuing. He also requested help from the central police. Meanwhile, many TV stations hosted discussions about Vigilant. Some criticized him for human rights reasons, but others supported him, saying he was a result of law enforcement's failure to deliver justice. Chung Yeon and his team celebrated their success as their company benefited from the high ratings generated by Vigilante. Mai Rio reminded them not to relax because they needed to keep using the Vigilant case to maintain high media ratings. Since Vigilant started his actions, the crime rate had dropped significantly and many criminals had turned themselves in. One police officer told his colleague that the central police, known as Johan or the Monster, would be leading the operation to capture Vigilante. Later on, Johan was seen interrogating Song Yul aggressively. He asked Song Yul if he had ever suspected someone who might be vigilant. Song Yul mentioned a young man at the nightclub who had been closely observing them, suggesting he could be vigilant. After getting this information, Johan let Song Yul go and contacted the central office, expressing his determination to capture Vigilant, dead or alive. And so, the story will continue. The moral of the story is, don't mess with someone who takes the law into their own hands at nightclubs while also excelling in their police academy classes. You might just lose your drugs and receive a lesson in justice through a beating.